Hello friends and welcome back to another Remnant 2 video. Today I am showing you every single dungeon injectable on Nerud. These are special little secret events or puzzles that you're going to come across before the main objective and these are random in the dungeon. So if you do multiple runs in adventure mode you're going to find these in different dungeons. So for instance you might find this electricity pipe puzzle in the dark conduit and then in a different adventure run of Nerud you might find it in the vault of the formless. There are eight specific events that we're going to be going over in this video. I will leave timestamps so you can skip through to the one that you're currently on. But this is going to cover everything that is within the dungeon. So nothing in the open world or anything. It's also important to note that on Nerud, there are inside dungeons and there are outside dungeons. The ones that have kind of the bridges around the big tall structures. You'll see what I mean when we get into it. But the injectables that we're talking about are specific to those types of dungeons. So there are two different groups, inside and outside. As always, if I missed anything, definitely leave a comment below. I tried to be extremely thorough on these injectables and have spent days playing Remnant to get footage for all of this. So let's dive right in. All right, first up, we are talking about the broken pipe and the locked door here. This is gonna be in an inside dungeon. You'll see a purple behind some glass and behind a door, just like this with a couple pipes. And here is how you solve it. Go around to this doorway right here, shoot out the barrels, drop down, and crouch through there to make your way up to the top. Once you're up top, you're going to pick up the rerouting cable ring. The rerouting cable says gain 5% of max health as shield for 5 seconds after spending 25 stamina accumulation resets after 5 seconds of inaction and it's a max of 50% shield. And then when you turn this corner, instead of dropping down right away, you're going to crouch, look through the little hole there until you can see the electric barrel, shoot it, which is going to connect the two pipes because there's water on the ground, which is going to then open the door when you jump back down. And you can now enter and pick up the purple item, which is the blackout ring. The blackout ring says after dealing 20% of the weapon's total magazine base damage, increases reload speed by 3%, stacks five times, cleared on reload. All right, up next is this injectable that you're going to find on the inside ones, most likely Void Vessel Facility and Vault of the Formless that have these mechanical arms. You want to look for a walkway like this with the mechanical arms. To your right on the ground, you're going to get the momentum driver ring. This ring is always the ring that's sitting there on the ground. Around. This one says after sprinting for two seconds, movement speed is increased by 15% and stagger level reduced by one. After you grab that, you're going to wait for these mechanical arms to bring this piece of metal all the way up and you're going to want to jump on that flat surface. Now, I like to wait until the mechanical arms are a couple more up towards the top because I think if you're on it for too long, you might get hit by that electricity. So I wouldn't chance it. I would just wait for the one to come out right here. And then you want to get a running start and jump onto the platform like that. Drop down and you'll see the Atom Splitter Melee. The Atom Splitter mod is called Fission Strike. On neutral evade attacks, Atom Splitter achieves nuclear fission, releasing a wave of charged particles which deal damage to targets within 20 meters. Charge neutral evade attacks increase range by three times and damage by 25%. I also want to say if you're digging this information and you like the way that I present it, definitely consider subscribing. I'm going to have a lot more Remnant 2 videos, including all of the DLCs, so you can look forward to that in the future. All right, next up is the purple orb. Now, if you've seen this one, you know what I'm talking about, but basically you're going to look for the broken down train car like this. Once you make your way through the train car, you're going to see a purple item right next to that purple item is going to be the purple orb that activates once once you get close. The purple item is Ring of Deflection. As soon as you pick that up, you're going to activate the purple orb. Do not get close to the purple orb. Do not touch the purple orb. The purple orb will kill you. I'm not sure if there's a puzzle attached to this or it is just trying to outrun the purple orb and pick up the two purple drops. It could be as simple as that. There are some pretty simple injectables. Anyway, the second purple is Focusing Shard up there in the other train car and that's it for this injectable. 
undetectable. The purple orb is just going to chase you for the rest of the dungeon now. On to the next puzzle. This is the rising water event. If you see this flooded room, you're going to want to make your way around and back down. I'm going to show you the route here. So there's an elevator here, which we're going to get on. And there is another shortcut door down the hallway, but we're going to get on the elevator and go down. You make your way all the way down, killing as you go here, and then make your way all the way back the ladders on the other side. And once we clear out the water, this is where we're going to come back to. Oh so just keep God. that in mind. We're going to make your way all the way up the ladders in order to access the control panel to drain the water. This is definitely a harder injectable to do solo as the water rises up. And there are three items that you can get from this event. So it makes it a little bit more difficult to grab everything. However, you can do it if you are willing to die in the process. To make it a little bit easier, you can also reset your trait points and make sure you get swiftness all the way up. And you also want to get wayfarer all the way up, which is going to give you traversal movement speed, which includes those ladder climbs. The other thing you want to do to set yourself up for success is bring the elevator back up. Now you could go down the same way you came up, which is down the ladder. However, I have fallen off and jumped down to my death a couple of times. So the elevator is just a little bit safer. So you're going to go back to the control room. You're going to turn on the water drain and then you're going to run over to that elevator. And then we're going to go into the airlock door here on the right. And if you're me, you'll go up and grab a couple things and then die, which is why I'm going to be showing you the perspective of somebody else and a huge shout out to Friendly's channel. I will link down below, but you can see their path for how to successfully get all of the items while solo they do die at the end so keep that in mind for you hardcore players it may not be worth trying to do this or it may only be worth getting one or two of the items instead of all three but just follow this path obviously if you're co-op it's a lot easier because you can kind of split both directions but the items you're going to get from this are the subterfuge link ring, which says after killing an enemy increases cast speed of the next mod or skill cast by 35% last 15 seconds or until consumed. The insulation driver amulet that says while bulwark is active, gain 15% to all damage dealt and haste. And then finally, the regenerating band, which regenerates 3% of max health per second while a shield is active. Up next, I'm showing you guys one of the outside area dungeon injectables. This one is the hole in the elevator shaft. So as you're going through the elevator shaft and you're rising up like this, if it's not spinning around, the elevator isn't spinning around, that's a good indicator. You're going to look for an area that's a little different like that and jump on through the hole. Here we go. There are a couple enemies to fight, but once that's done, you're going to be picking up the low yield recovery ring. This says killing an enemy regenerates 5% max health over 5 seconds. Additional kills increase duration by 5 seconds, max 30 seconds. After you pick that up, you're going to head back out towards the elevator to get back down. And if you're like me, you're just going to go back down and go along your merry way. However, let's stop right there, back it up, and we're going to go to... Another channel's footage, La Vida Virtual. I spent so many hours trying to find this injectable in the first place that when I went back and was spending hours trying to find it again in order to get this new ring, I just could not find it and I wanted to get this video out for you guys. So their channel will be down in the description below. However, when you get to the elevator that's going to go down, you basically want to step back from it while it goes down because it's going to bring another elevator down down to you from the top. So once the elevator is fully down on the ground level, there'll be another elevator that you can hop onto and go up. So once you hop on there, you're going to go all the way up to the top. You'll see the part on the map, and then you're going to walk up and get that propulsion loop. This is one that I'm going to have to go back and get because I still don't have this one. But it says after killing an enemy increases movement speed by 5% and consumable use speed by 10% for 10 seconds, and it stacks three times. All right, now we are on to all the mutators that you can get as random injectable events in your dungeon. There are three aberrations and I'm going to show those to you now. First up is this red drop down tunnel 
type looking thing. This is going to be in one of those outside areas, outside looking dungeons. You're going to make your way down the red tunnel. There's an elite that flies up out of the middle, but just keep making your way down. Be careful not to drop all the way down because you will die to fall damage. But once you kill him and make your way down, you're going to find the constant variable ring. This increases range damage up to 20% based on your current weapon's overheat value. So if you like to use weapons with an overheat gauge, you're going to want to continue running down that hallway though and open the door at the end of it, which is going to bring you to this weird looking thing right here. If you get close enough, you can actually interact with it and it's going to teleport you inside. You'll find the restless spirit aberration there in this small little arena. Once you kill it, you're then going to get the Time Wave Mutator, which is one of my absolute favorites. I run it on my Enigma. Mod use applies slow status on all enemies within seven and a half meters for seven seconds. At level 10, this increases the weapon's range damage by 15% to enemies inflicted with the slow status. Once you're done with the kill, you'll get teleported back and you can use this door to get to an elevator that brings you back to where you were. All right, up next, we are back to the inside dungeons. You're gonna see a bunch of robots in their little glass cages with a ladder right here. That's how you know you got the injectable. And this one is kind of like a two-parter with killing the aberration. And also you're able to get that purple drop there that's located inside one of the robot cages, basically. So you're gonna wanna go all the way down and engage with the aberration, WD-109. Do not kill him right away. What you're gonna wanna do is bait him to come back up towards where that ring was. And as he comes walking through, he's gonna actually open the doors of all the robot cages and they're gonna all come walking out. So be careful because now you have to fight a billion robots as well as this aberration. But that's all you have to do to open the door in order to get the purple finish off WD-109 and you're gonna be rewarded with the transpose mutator, which says picking up ammo increases range damage by 20% for 20 seconds. Ammo pickups are added directly to the weapons magazine. Once you're done with that kill, you can also go back to the room that had the purple in it and pick up the excess coil. This says activating a skill grants a shield for 25% of max health cannot stack with itself and it lasts 10 seconds. All right, on to the final aberration and our final dungeon injectable. This one's gonna be an inside dungeon for the progeny aberration. This one has a locked door and you're gonna to have to find the glyph in order to unlock that door. Now the glyph can be anywhere in the dungeon. It's gonna be randomly placed. Mine was just in this little hallway here. So once you find the airy glyph, you're gonna grab it and make your way back to that dungeon door. Once you get back to the beginning and back to that door, you're going to place the glyph in there to open the door. And then as you make your way down the bridge, you'll see the aberration spawn. The progeny killing him is going to give you the mutator disengage. This is a melee mutator that says melee strikes increase the damage of the next backdash evade attack by 4%, max five stacks, and it lasts seven and a half seconds. Level 10, it gives you five stacks for the perfect neutral evade. Once you're done killing him, you wanna make sure you fully explore the area and go all the way up because there's actually a ring drop up there, the Ring of Crisis. Is when the wearer's health drops below 25%, you gain a shield for 25% of your max health and it lasts for 10 seconds. All right, guys, that is it for all of the injectables in all the Nerud dungeons. I will be trying to get a majority of this information in written form up on our website, dpscheck.gg. Coming up this week, I'm going to get as much info on DPS check, but I'm also going to be covering Starfield. If you don't follow my Twitter, I announced that I got a early review code, so I've been trying to balance Remnant and Starfield, but I will be streaming on Twitch this Friday the 31st, starting at noon. Noon Eastern time when our embargo lifts and we can start a Starfield playthrough. So if you're interested in checking it out and want to see what the gameplay is like, consider dropping a follow and you'll be notified when I go live. But that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.